an easy thing to just grab somebody's neck and squeeze, right? But that arm position, your body position, everything matters, okay? And if any of them is out of place, it doesn't work. It's like me choking me talking about, right? So if you set it up and lock it up, and that's why I'm saying don't lock your hands until you are in a position to attack, all right? Because if I set it up and lock it up early, then that arm's going to be stuck in the, in the way. That's what I'm seeing a couple of different places. All right? All right? So, when I start attacking his arm and I get his arm above his head, okay, a lot of you guys are locking that in right here, right? You're locking your hands, everything's set, okay? But you see where his arm is? It's up by his face, his head's in the way, okay? I want, I want there to be some play there. I want to keep it trapped, but I don't necessarily want it to move him. Make sense? So when I get my head under that arm, I'm keeping that other arm free. If you have to lock it up, great. But ideally, I don't want to. Because I don't want to clamp on so hard that I can never get that elbow to drop back and help me finish the choke. Right? The other thing is that if I'm so clamped on here and I start trying to mount, all right? Again, if John gets that hip in the way, or that elbow in my hip, he's going to start just roll me over. And now I'm really in a bad position. All right, he's just gonna chill out because I already locked it up in the wrong spot, okay? So, when I get that arm up, I'm grabbing the tricep, <coughs> keeping my chin connected to my hand, but my other arm is free. And now I can use it to manipulate his legs, right? I've got an extra weapon now. We talk about having weapons, right? As soon as I commit two, I don't have any left to attack and defend against his legs. So I get my head under that arm, I can use that to help control him. Okay? So they're drawing that knee up. Now, once I'm here, I gotta drop back. I'm still keeping my head under his arm, and this is the battle. I can use my, the ground now to keep him from dropping that elbow. But I wanna make him feel like he can start escaping that arm. He's got space. He can move it. All right? Because he'll eventually drop it back towards his chin. Thinking he's pushing on my head. And that's what I need. Because now when I drive into it, it's across his neck. <laughs> you see? I didn't even squeeze and it was already in a place to choke him. Does that make sense? I still haven't locked my hands. So if I'm already so committed to squeezing, and I'm squeezing, and John's just saying, exactly what you run into, yeah, it hurts on my jaw, but it's not choking. Okay, so I'm better off being softer, but letting things move to where I need them. And then once I feel it in the right position, that's when I clamp on. I feel his arm pushing against my neck. That's when I latch my neck, latch my hands, and his arm is below his chin. All right, the other thing about locking up on this side, is you see how high my shoulder is? Again, it's on his chin. <coughs> I need to be under his chin. So this is the control. But once I get to that mount, I'm dropping my shoulder back, setting it on his chest, right below his chin. So as I squeeze, it slides up. All right, I want to set it on his sternum and then let it slide up, just like we do in that, uh, that guillotine von flu we've talked about. All right. So I get there, my head's back. He can move his arm around all he wants right now. I'm still underneath it. My hips are low. I can kick my hips back or my feet back and control his legs. I can climb back here as long as his arm is on the back of my head. If I lift it, now he's out. But I'm still in a position to attack. I'm still crushing his ribs, right? I've still got a good position, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm actually crushing my feet. Sure, that too. That's why we wear cups. <laughs> all right, so. My head's back, I give him space to choke himself, and as soon as he starts to try to fight it, that unlocks my head. Oh, I'm in trouble. My shoulder's under his chin, my elbow. This is the other thing most people forget about, is my choking elbow is on the ground. As soon as it raises, it releases the pressure. So if I get so excited here, and I get, ah, he's gonna be fine, right? Because I'm so worried about driving my shoulder in, my elbow lifts, I lose my leverage. Cool? So, once I get to that point, I still don't have my hands locked. I draw my shoulder back, my head is tight, 
I feel his arm go across his chin. Then I go ear to ear, palm to palm, elbow on the ground, I roll my wrist, and I can squeeze. Okay? If he doesn't tap here, then I switch my foot. I'm not just jumping. Okay, my foot is above his legs. He's gonna lock it into half turn. Now I gotta deal with trying to escape. Yeah. Too much work, all right? Instead, I'm gonna lift that foot and push it across his legs. All right, just like my knee on belly position. <coughs> all right? Just a little trick. Head and arm is a great attack from knee on belly. Most people don't see it coming. Especially on that same side. If he's fighting with his hands here, and I can pop that elbow, I can drop right into it. Cool? So I use that to flatten his hips out. I can get my shoulder in place, hold the ball, and if I want to finish here, I can. If I still can't finish, I kick off and I flatten. Roll the wrist. Tell me exactly what you're doing when you finish. I want to be. Any of these versions, you okay? Yeah. All right. Need a break? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Any of these versions, I want to be as flat as possible because I'm trying to push my shoulder under his chin. I'm not trying to drive down into it. You know? Slide up. Yep. Yeah. So without a person here, my shoulder's back. Whether I'm in mount, whether I'm in knee on belly, I flat it, pull it forward. Even the asterisk version, same thing. Forward. All right, so I'm pushing my shoulder up into that neck, and his arm is trapped across the other side. Cool? So again, some details, I'm sorry for being long-winded, as usual, right? But these details are what finish it, because if you're having a hard time, it's usually one of these things isn't in place. All right? One more real quick, and we'll do a couple, drill a couple more. So I'm on collar, get my head under his arm, I trap it between my head and my hand, I can start working on my mount. Oh, All right, at no time did my foot come up where he could catch it. All right? It draws a certain line across his body. So I drop my shoulder back, let him think he can get that arm across, then I latch it. All right, four heads on the ground. I go ear to ear. I can squeeze. I can stretch. If he's still not tapping, I switch that foot. Flatten it out. If he's still not tapping, I flatten everything. If he's still not tapping, I walk the circle. Cool? Questions? One, two, three.